Okay, so uh, welcome back to Chem Lab. Today we're going to be working on um, the mole and stoichiometry. So kind of like getting into the nitty gritty parts of chemical equations. So before uh, we actually get into this, I hope you know how to balance a chemical equation. If not, um, Khan Academy and other websites have great resources for that. I'm just not going to cover it because I feel like it's kind of an essential knowledge that people should know when going to high school. But I mean, I'll, I'll just give a quick overview. Basically, when you're balancing chemical equations, you put uh, constants or coefficients in front of each of the uh, compounds or molecules that whether those be products or reactants, um, just to balance out how many of each atoms there are in both of them, in both the product side and the reactant side. So for example, you want to have the same amount of carbon atoms on both the products and reactants, hydrogen, oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially what you do is you put down coefficients that will help you balance it out, kind of like an equilibrium. So for right now, we'll start with the mole. So um, for the mole, I'm going to use a green color because why not, you know? So the mole is essentially, um, it's essentially a number that will help us determine how many atoms or molecules there are in a certain number of moles. So numbers can get uh, like abruptly large when you're dealing in chemistry because like it's atoms, you can barely see them. So we use the mole to represent a really large amount of atoms. So Avogadro's mole is what it's called, or Avogadro's number is one mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd. 10 to the 23rd. Imagine that. That's huge. It's huge. Like it's unfathomable, right? That's how many atoms are in one mole. And so this number can be used to, you know, to, like I said before, we can find the number of atoms or molecules there are in a certain number of moles. And it's an easy translation from moles to grams because what we see on the periodic table, the small masses that are written um, below each of the elements is actually its molar mass or also known as atomic mass. But we can call it a molar mass because one mole of substance is equal to that many grams. So, for example, if I wanted one mole one mole of carbon. We know it's it's generally 12.00 something grams. So that is a conversion factor. And we could further go on and say, okay, if we know um, one mole of carbon is 12 grams, then we know that there are 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in 12 grams of carbon. And say instead I have, um, for a certain scenario, I have 24.06 grams of carbon. Well, this is an easy thing to understand, okay? I, multi I roughly multiplied 12 by two, which means I doubled my number of moles of carbon as well. So that would mean that I have two moles of carbon. And if I have two moles of carbon, that means I double this number too, this big number. That's easy. We just have to, we, we're not really going to double 10 to the 23rd. We're really just going to be doubling this number over here, which is going to be approximately 12.046 times 10. And then we just had to add this here to the 23rd. Atoms or molecules. It depends on what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, that's how we can go from grams to moles, moles to atoms or molecules, and uh, back and forth. So, um, for example, if I already give, let's, let's give you an example. So once I write this down, feel free to pause the video and try to solve it for yourself. Say I have 2.5 moles of H2O. I want you to find number of moles or yeah, sorry, number of molecules of H2O. I want you to find mass of H2O. And what would these two values be if say I bumped it up to three moles 
of H2O. So pause the video right now, take like a minute or two, it shouldn't take longer than that to try to solve these questions. All right. I'm assuming you've been a good boy or a good girl and you've actually paused it and you've solved it, but here we go, I'll go through it. So first thing is to find the molar mass of water. So mm water, but we know the, um, the atomic mass of one hydrogen is approximately 1.008. So two of them is gonna be 2.016. And then for one oxygen, there's essentially 16.00 grams. So it's gonna to translate to 18 point, point zero 0.01, or we'll, we'll put zero 0.02 using sig figs, grams per mole. Okay, so we have one conversion thing we can do. All right, well, we don't really need that for, we don't really need that for this first one. So for this first one, all we have to do is, we know we have moles and we wanna, we wanna get to molecules. Moles to molecules means we just have to use Avogadro's number. So 2.5 times 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, that's easy enough. Uh, six times two is approximate. Uh, six times two is twelve, and approximately half of six is three. So twelve plus three is fifteen. Um, let's say we we kind of smudge up the number, so it would be fifteen point something. Uh, let's just call it fifteen for right now. Times ten to the twenty third, which we could express as one point five times ten to the twenty fourth molecules. Okay. Now let's go back to that that second question, okay? Which is, what is the mass of H2O? So for this, we're gonna use what we actually did over here, what we did over here. So we know that there's 2.5 moles given, moles of H2O. And here's where a lot of dimensional analysis will come up in chemistry. We're gonna use that conversion factor, 18.02 grams per mole. So 18.02 grams per one mole of H2O. Now what I want you to see is, with dimensional analysis, you get this beautiful canceling out, right? So this is gonna cancel. This cancels and this cancels, and guess what we're left with? 2.5 times 18.02. And so 18 times two is 36, half of 18 is approximately nine. So 36 plus nine is 45. So we'll get 45, we'll put a similar sign, grams of H2O. Okay, so I want you to take a pause here and really understand what I just did. Okay, I set up a conversion factor over here. Say for example, I wanted to go from 18 por or I wanted to go from 45 grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. Guess what? I use the same conversion factor. I just flip it around. So I would use 45 grams of H2O over one times one mole of H2O because we're solving for moles. So we want it on the top divided by 18.02 grams of H2O. And look at that. Now in this case, grams canceled out and we know that this is gonna become 2.5 moles of H2O. Never forget to also put moles of what? Okay, so when we're getting into stoichiometry, you have to you have to have to remember that. Otherwise you're gonna you're gonna mess up your equations and it's gonna suck. Okay, now on to the actual stoichiometry part. So actually, before we address that, what I just did was I found the molar mass of compounds. Uh, basically, you have to add up the mass of number of atoms of one thing plus the mass of the number of atoms of another thing, so on and so forth. Uh, finally, we can actually get to some um, stoichiometry, also known as mole ratio problems, is what I like to call it. So mole ratio, not ration, what is that? 
So mole ratio is essentially a fancy way of saying, you know, converting one thing to another thing. Let's take a, a quite random equation. Two sodium, so this is a balanced equation, by the way, so we'll go over what balancing means. Two, two, time, two sodium hydroxide atoms and one calcium chloride bond to make two table salts and a calcium hydroxide. So this is a double replacement reaction. If you um, haven't learned this, just go and look into a chemistry book. It's like, it's always gonna be right there. Essentially, we, we picked this one, and we picked this one, we combined them. So this is a cation, this is an anion, so it came together. We picked the other set of cations and anions, so OH and CA. This would be your, your cation, this is your anion, and they come together. And they have this, this, this coefficient thing changes, and that's due to the charge the charges different. So CA is two plus. So since you're crossing a two plus with a one minus, the OH is gonna get two as a subscript. Okay, so um, also if you wanna learn more about you know the balancing equations, also notice that there's two Na molecules on this side, there's two on this side as well. There are two, there are two chlorine molecules on this side and two times Cl on this side as well. There's one calcium on this side, there's one calcium on that side. We have two of hydroxides on one side, and we have two of hydroxides on this side. So since the it's all equal, so it's balanced. Meaning now we can finally do some reaction stuff on it. So say we want to determine the mole ratio between sodium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is this, Calcium hydroxide is this. And for naming, once again, just go check out our textbook. It's like pretty easy. So what is the mole ratio is the number of atoms needed for one thing to produce some number of atoms needed for the other thing. So here we see there is a, well, that's the wrong color. Uh oh, okay. Forget anything, any of that happened. This is sodium hydroxide. This is calcium hydroxide. So I want you to notice this, this, the coefficient or the constant in front of both of these um, substances. So sodium hydroxide has a two in front of it. That means there's two sodium hydroxides produced for, let's see, we have what's in front of the calcium hydroxide. Technically there's, there's a one. So for every two sodium hydroxides, for two NaOH, two moles of NaOH, I should write. So I'll just write that real quickly. Two moles of NaOH, we're gonna have one mole of CaOH2. So that's our mole ratio. So for example, this is where the stoichiometry comes into play. If I'm given, say I'm given four moles, yeah, let's say I'm given four moles of NaOH. So four moles are present. We're gonna use this ratio and we're gonna determine, let's assume that everything else is in excess quantity such that this reaction goes to completion and that sodium is sodium hydroxide is not limiting and um, limiting reactant stuff that's also something you can get into further with stoichiometry but don't really think we really need to know that for this case so if we're given four moles of NaOH we're going to just use this this uh, conversion factor. It's really similar to the dimensional analysis we did before, except now instead of using grams to moles, we're basically going from moles of one substance to moles of another substance. And this connects back to also the law of conservation of mass. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. So if we have four moles of NaOH, with, so it, this has per one, and we know that we want NaOH to cancel so we can get how many calcium hydroxides will be 
produced. So we're going to put the two moles of NaOH on the bottom. And we're going to put one mole of CaOH2 on the top. And lo and behold, we have a canceling system over here. This cancels as well. We get two. And finally, we get we get if I can select the correct we get two moles of CaOH2 produced. All right. So that is stoichiometry for you. Obviously, this could go a lot more advanced. For example, you might not be given four moles of NaOH. You might be given some uh, mass of NaOH, right? Say I was given, um, I don't know, something like 13 grams of NaOH or sodium hydroxide. You first will need to convert that to moles and then apply the mole ratio. Sometimes you'll also get something between like a reactant and reactant, okay? For the, uh, for the reaction to go to completion, both of those, both of the reactants have to be in proportion. So for example, it has to be in a two to one proportion. So they will ask maybe something like, if I'm given 13 grams of sodium hydroxide, how much calcium chloride do I need for the, um, for the reaction to go to completion? And that's where you would use that NaOH and CaCl Cl2 proportion. Okay. Well, that was all I had for stoichiometry. Hopefully you understood that. I know it's a little bit clustered. It gets a lot mathy. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. All right, see you next time.